Cobes. That's it, basically, for Little Kill stuff. Someone suggested, hey, Josh, in case you need some content this week, or this Friday, Cobes made a jalapeno meatloaf. Well, chat. As a matter of fact, Mr. Man at the Internet Thread Poster, um, I could actually go for a little extra content this day. So, you know what? Jalapeno meatloaf. <laughs> let's see how, let's see what's up. This is from two years ago. Okay, this was before the dark times. This is like, he's got that sadder billy goat thing. He looks like um the, the little guy from, from Hercules. It's a peak Ooh, Cobra style. Cobra. Now we're going to be making a very delicious, very delicious meatloaf. Very and delicious, chat. It's been promised. We're going to cook off some bacon first. To start off our recipe, we're going to grab ourselves some naturally hardwood smoked Oscar Mayer thick cut bacon. Oh, Oscar Mayer. That's the brand, bro. That's the brand for the best meats, okay? This the King Cobra. He's up there singing. Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. That's that's Cobra. Okay, this is a real story. This is true Josh lore you've never heard before. I know for a fact I've never told this story because I've never had a reason to. In the United States, there was a advertising campaign from the Oscar Mayer Meat Company, and they sell hot dogs and shit. And their their advertisements are usually a montage of little kids singing the song, Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener because then everybody would be in love with me. That's that's how it goes. My mom took me to a mall where they were trying to record, and I knew this song down fucking pat. I had it memorized. I could sing it front to back. And they put me in front of that camera. And I completely froze up. I might as well have been petrified by fucking Medusa into a stone statue. I completely and totally seized. I and when it came, when it came time for the moment, I didn't perform. I didn't perform. And it's haunted me. It's a it's haunted me my entire life. I could have been famous. I could have been an Oscar Mayer wiener kid. <laughs> We need the footage. It never aired. I never. I didn't. I. I didn't sing. Um. I don't know if it's on like a dusty old thing somewhere, but it, it didn't. I don't think it, it got recorded or stored anywhere. Uh. So yeah. <laughs> whenever. I, whenever I see Oscar Mayer, I think of the time that as a very very little kid, I I completely fucked up my uh my rehearsal for the the commercials. Now, before we add in our bacon, we're going to need to grease up our pan, Stan. All right, take a look at that. There's one. That's going to be tasty. Wait, what the fuck is that? I missed it. What did he put in there? Right. Is that just butter? Stand. Is that just baking up? Is he just putting like a giant glob of bacon? Okay. If you've never cooked American bacon before, American bacon is, I want to say like 40% fat. It's an extremely fatty meat. You can put bacon into a cast iron skillet and you do not need anything else in there. In fact, if you do add any grease, you're just going to over oversaturate it with fat you do not need to add like a, a cup of bacon up to bacon because it is such a fatty meat that's gonna be tasty all right now we need our bacon and we're going to take that bacon and drop it into the pan full of butter Not enough bacon in here. I learned um, from my Italian roommate when I lived in Buffalo. I learned that the best way to cook bacon was on a rack in like a baking tray in the oven. Because, uh, and then you could easily take the fat that fell off of it and uh, put it into like a mayo jar for, for, because baking up is basically just what people used to do at home. You cook bacon and then you save the fat and you added the fat to like your collard greens or your green peas or whatever. You added it to soup to give it like a more meaty, fatty flavor to it, enhance the flavor. Um, 
I'm kind of shocked to see that there's now a product that's just the bacon grease that people used to <laughs> used to get from just cooking normally, like a normal fucking person. I may just end up cooking it all up. Bacon chop house burger seasoning. Let's go with that. Just a little bit of a little bit of that on our bacon. More bacon, you too. That's a lot of bacon, buddy. That should be enough bacon. I mean, I practically used like half the pack, if not a little bit over half. Oh, look at all that bacon. Oscar Mayer goodness. The chat's backing me up. The chat's finally backing me up on something, on my, my bacon method. It does. It stays crispy. You don't need it to, to fry in the pan. Add the last of that bacon. So we're going to start off this recipe with a full goddamn pack of Oscar Mayer's thick cut bacon. Not a sponsor. Get you some of that. Wait, so he... He put half the pack in and now he's putting in the other half? Why is he doing it later? Oh yeah, dude. We're gonna get the rest of this goddamn bacon cooked up. Oh yeah, just like that, looking nice. Oh, he's just oh, he's just cooking a second batch. Okay, I got you. What up? Bacon is fully cooked. Now we need to make our breadcrumbs. Oh, did I say breadcrumbs? I meant to say <sighs> chip crumbs. Now before we do that, just get MSG, I bro. A bigger bowl to use for this. Okay. I mean, right, now, correct add, me if I'm wrong. But Dorito powder is just like dehydrated nacho cheese and MSG, right? Am I am I off? I imagine it's just salt, dehydrated nacho cheese and MSG, and that's that's like Dorito dust, yeah. Fun fact: they use they made a Dorito dust that didn't stick to your fingers, but consumers liked licking the grease the, the crumbs off their fingers, so they didn't go with it. Our chip crumbs and everything else. We know your beef. 80% lean and 20% fat. So there we go. So into a just add our beef first. Do we eat all of it really, realistically? It's mostly onion and garlic powder, really? So you mean to be telling me she you mean you fix it to say that Hold up, that they season they chip. That's why it's such a successful brand. They got they got uh, Aunt Jemima up there seasoning they chips. Some more. We're gonna add our chips, man. Woo! Look at. Yeah, cheddar sour cream ruffles that, and Dorito. That's my favorite chomp. Of all the chomps in the whole world, that's my favorite right there. Just so you know. Just so everybody knows what my favorite chomps are. Tostitos. Let's assume that there's no salsa. If there's salsa, I like the Tostitos restaurant style salsa, chat. Yeah. This is being difficult. Any beef we don't use, I'll just wrap in tin foil and stick it in the freezer for later. The, the meatloaf is only beef, but he's going to add... Usually you add breadcrumbs to it to give it a, a, a firmness to it. He's adding ruffles and Doritos. That's going to be his breadcrumbs. Chips. Chips. Normally when you make uh, meatloaf, you add breadcrumbs, but I'm going to be creative. I'm going to use... Cheddar sour cream ruffles and nacho cheese Doritos, bitch. Sounds like a bad combination. What are you doing? Now we're gonna take our meat. This is the last thing a jalapeno meatloaf sees. <laughs> meat. Oh yeah, that's a pleasant sound. Always make sure you use a bowl that can barely fit what you're working with. Heated to 350 goddamn degrees. Okay, the chips are packed in there pretty good. 
Not really. You didn't really mix okay, them that well. Okay, we got our bacon, we got our beef. We need, we, we need some eggs, man. So into our now empty bowl, we're gonna crack in some eggs. I say about maybe four eggs, cause that's a lot of beef. My grandmother grew up um, as the daughter of a family that survived the um, American Great Depression. So she had a lot of stories about how her mother would collect things. Uh, in particular, she never threw away those tabs on loaves of bread. It was just like a, a habit picked up from back when people really had absolutely nothing. <clears throat> and her, she made a meatloaf. And she would bake it with ketchup on it. And this meatloaf was one of her favorite things, but all of her children hated it <laughs> because it was like Great Depression poverty food. And um, I don't know. I never really had any strong feelings on it, but my mom really in particular hated that this meatloaf was just like covered in ketchup, <laughs> like regular Heinz ketchup. Before we add in our eggs, we're going to add in some more of that banging Chop House burger seasoning. Making some motherfucking meatloaf. Bacon, cheddar, jalapeno meatloaf. Hell yeah, so Cobes. Can you handle it? It's fucking metal, Cobes. Now that we got our four eggs in there, it's time to uh, whisk it up. All right. Dude, it's like perfectly packed in there. Here's a life hack that I've learned. Always use a bowl that's substantially bigger than what you think you need. Because it, there's no bigger pain in the fucking ass than when you're trying to do something and shit's just spilling out because the bowl's too fucking small. So just do yourself a favor and get the big bowl. You're, you're not gonna re you'll never regret getting the bowl bigger than you need. I want to take it and kind of make it look like a donut in the middle. So give us a place to dump our egg mixture. Oh, that looks so good, YouTube. Not sure how it's going to turn out, but we're about to find out, right? And I'm going to take our raw egg and seasoning. Yeah. It goes. I don't think you're, I think you're supposed to mix the egg in, bro. Let's get these jalapenos prepped before we mix in our raw egg. Really you're just going to leave it on the counter while you do the... the jalapenos. And then just split it He's just going to leave it like that while he does this. Okay. F tip. Someone said Josh life lesson number 3,538 or whatever. Here's 3,539. Get a fucking chef's knife. Oh, fuck me. I don't want to cut my fingers. For that, oh, uh, for that exact fucking reason. And then if you get blood... Dude, he like cut his... Like, <laughs> I don't. His knife is so dull. I don't think he even cut himself. But like, imagine getting all that jalapeno juice and into your uh, your fucking bloodstream, and then your blood into your jalapenos. What a disaster! Get a chef knife. Okay. Let's take our. Our beef. <laughs> he like gave up trying to cut those those oh, into rings. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Fuck. Shit. Spill an egg all over the place. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you get a big bowl when you do shit. That's okay, dog. That should do it. It was easy to clean up. One second. Shout out to the podcast people just listening uh, to these lovely ASMR sound effects in real time. Spare towel that I use for cleaning messes. Oh, he's gonna bring up the spare towel, huh? <laughs> yeah, you just Some wipe off the food board with that spare. This fucking meatloaf better be where it's at, Tubes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's better be like so fucking good to make you want to slap your mama. You feel me on that, YouTube? That's a great subtitle. <laughs> There's a, um, 
random text on the Kiwi Farms that is like, I don't remember where this is from, but it's a guy talking to like his kids, and he's like an old man, and his kids are adults, but he says something like, I slapped your mama with the pickle, that's why they call me the thumper. And it's sort of like a very profound statement that has a deep meaning that resonates all on a human level. Cobes is just off in the distance swearing. <laughs> Some country crock original. We're going to use that to uh, grease our pan. Motherfucking. Eh, that's just the fun of cooking, I suppose. Hey, by the way, is Cyrax from Akron, Ohio? Is that where he's from? We're just going to take a baking tray and we're going to grease. I was checking the approval queue and someone messaged like I was posting in the Dota 2 thread and someone posted in the Dota 2 thread claiming that he was Cyrax and had information on Music Biz Marty and I brought that up because people were talking about the Bog Witch and it made me think of like the gay ass trolls that ruin lol cows um, I, I spam cleaned his account and then I, I thought wait I should because I thought it was just like a retard like pretending. And then I checked his IP address and it's from a consumer IP in Akron, Ohio. So I unde I unbanned him and undeleted the post and then moved it to the Cyrex thread and then completely forgot about it until just now. So that guy that's like the, the ninja or something, it has like a three three word name like Cyber of Ninja or some shit. Um he's posting from Akron. I don't know if he's actually uh, real though. Side of it just like that. Put the rest of that butter off into the burger meat, I guess. Fuck it. Alright, so now we're going to take our ingredients. And now we're going to take and start lining the inside of our baking tray with our meat. The meat chat. It's finally happening. Cobes' plan is coming together perfectly. Push it down in there. Trust Cobes' magic. Now we're going to add to it with our clean faith. hand. I'll tell you what we're going to add. Some bacon. <laughs> bacon. Bacon. And a nice healthy layer of bacon. Now we're going to add our jalapenos. A little bit of cheese. Oh, jeez. Basically just making a big hamburger if you had cheese. We'll make it fit. We'll make it fit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sharp cheddar. That's the good shit. The pre-shredded sharp cheddar. Now we're going to take our, uh, our French onion dip. And put that on top. Mm. That's mm. not normal. Take our bacon French onion dip. I want to say that that's not normal. Maybe in Casper. It's like a Wyoming thing. Anyone from Casper want to confirm if you guys put French onion dip in uh, meatloaf? Boss. Mm. Ew! All right, they so caught me off guard. Too. That's fucking gross. There she be so far. Now I put all the meat on top of that. All right, back to our meat packing. Look at that, YouTube. We had barely just enough room to fit our meatloaf. It's called efficiency, chat. It's called it's a high efficiency meatloaf. Into our meatloaf, we're going to add the last of our jalapenos. Yeah, he really just gave up cutting that fucker, and now he's just like. Okay, so I'm gonna slap this in the. I'm oven. just gonna cut him in half we're one time. For a good 45 minutes to an hour. We had some hiccups, but we're getting there. Look at that sexy mother loving. Okay, so 
we did not need this extra pan. We made it, we made it fit, dude. We made it fit. Yeah, it may have to cook a little bit longer because look at that. That is a meatloaf if I ever saw one, dude. There we go. Preheated at 350. Top rack action. And hold up a second. Just in case any grease drips out of the pan, we're going to put one underneath it. Just in case. Be on the safe side, y'all. Well, YouTube, that's how you do that. So I'll see you on the next part. Okay, I'm so excited. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't look ahead. I was, I was, well, I'm debating if he's going to add like a sauce to it. He's going to add like a jar of oh, sauce gosh, to it. That it's not going to be done just yet. It's been in there for a while. Oh, fuck me. It's a lot of grease in here. Drain some of that out. Okay, so here's our bomb ass meatloaf. Yes, sir. I'm gonna slap it with some barbecue sauce. Yeah, there we go. Now, some people like to put oh, ketchup it's... on this. I'll ketchup. Low, but we are gonna be using Kraft honey, sweet honey barbecue sauce. There we go. Drizzles. That's how you know he's bougie. On top of our meatloaf. Now that we got our barbecue sauce drizzled on top, I'm gonna pop it back in the oven. Let it bake for another 45 minutes to an hour. Should have done that in the first place. Okay, there we go. All right, so here it is, part two. Let it bake. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Now, part three, we're gonna add some cheese, some more of that dip, and throw it back in there for a little bit longer to let the cheese melt on top, but that's coming up next. The More cheese. Okay, I'm gonna skip to when he eats this. I think. Let's see the final plating. There we go. Knife and like scraped it off. And try a little bit of the cheese. This looks dankish, dude. So part five is gonna be trying to let it cool off. What is up, YouTube? We have the meatloaf, and I can't stop eating it. YouTube, this is. Like He's not gonna eat this first bite. Meatloaf. He's already eaten half of it. That barbecue sauce has a sweetness to it. That sweet complements the heat of the jalapenos. With all the ingredients, the jalapenos are dumbed down on the heat, but there's just enough spiciness to tingle your tongues. A really delicious, meaty treat, YouTube. Simply decadent. You know, conservatives would say that this is the healthiest meal possible because it's all meat and cheese. And therefore, and there's no seed oil in it. And bacon, and bacon grease. So you got bacon grease, you got bacon, you got beef, and you got cheese. You think of a more well-rounded, healthy meal? This is how you spike your tea. This is how you uh, align your chakras so that women are uh, um, <laughs> attracted to you. You just got to eat the pure beef. <laughs> Want a cross-section of where I cut it? Yes. Look at that sexiness, YouTube. That layer of bacon and cheese right there. Plus all the cheese and the sour cream and onion sauce on top. Popping with flavor, dude. I am really happy with the way that uh, meatloaf turned out. I'm going to be eating good for the next couple of days. Ooh, that is some goddamn good meatloaf. Pure beef. How do you satisfy the palate of the American? You simply add pounds of beef. That's it. Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.